Okay, uh, let's start with a quick review because when I got to these slides on day one, I went through them kind of quickly and I think I may have forgotten something. We talked about symmetry, we talked about how to find symmetry, what we didn't talk about was even and odd. What does it mean for a function to be even? What does it mean for a function to be odd? Well handled. You could have just said, excuse me, I would have moved. <laughs> So if it's symmetric about the y-axis, it's called an even function. Now there's a nice easy trick that you can use to determine if a function is even and odd. If it's a polynomial, you can look at all the exponents. If all the exponents are even, it's an even function. Or you test it algebraically using the negative x thing that we talked about early on in this chapter. Okay. And again, I went through this quickly before and I don't think I've talked about even and odd. So then an odd function, uh, well, we don't care about that because that's not a function. But an odd function would be when it's symmetric about the origin. And the same trick is true. If all the exponents are odd, then the function will be odd. And you can test it algebraically by plugging in both the negative x and the negative y. Okay, quick review. And those slides were in there, but I just went through them very quickly, and I feel like I missed that little tidbit. Okay, let's finish up with this algebra review stuff today. Uh, talk about some combinations and classifications classification and combinations of functions. Ooh. A lot of information going on here. This is what you want. And if I were you, well, I shouldn't say that if I were you. You probably don't have to write this down because you know this already. If you add two functions together, it's the same thing as just adding two functions together. Seems like a stupid statement. And you get that. If you're subtracting two functions, you subtract two functions. Multiplying is multiplying, dividing is dividing. There is a little catch here with f divided by g of x. What is it? Remember, we're in the real number system. Is that how you do it? Right, so g of x cannot be equal to 0. Easy stuff. We want to get into more complicated stuff, which would be composite functions. And I think I asked you this earlier about what is a composite function. Composite function is putting one function into another. There's two of them. There's f of g, and I don't think I have it up there. We're just going to talk about f of g, but you also have g of f. f of g, we'll start with that. Which one goes in first? Does g go into f or does f go into g? G goes into f. G goes into f, correct. We go backwards. And then you get into a whole bunch of domain questions. Well, what's the domain? If I have the domain of f and I have the domain of g, then what's the domain of the composite function? It's not something that we really need to dwell on a lot because it's never asked. And it's actually fairly complicated. And we can draw pictures and everything, but it's not relevant. What I'm more concerned about is whether or not you can put this function together. Can you get the function from f and from g? So we'll start with uh, two nice little functions. 2x minus 3. What can you tell me about that function? It's linear. Slope? 2. 2, y intercept? Negative 3. Negative 3. What can you tell me about g of x? Cosine. That's it? Just cosine? It's a standard cosine graph. Okay. Uh, what's f of g? Correct. What is it? Perfect. <laughs> 2 cosine x, 2 times the quantity cosine x, close parentheses, minus 3. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. Come on, baby. Yes. What 
What's G of F? domain of F? All reals. What's the range of F? All reals. What's the domain of G? One, or all reals. All reals, and what's the range of G? One to negative one. One to negative one. Okay, so we can spend quite a bit of time figuring out what's the domain of F of G of X and G of F of X, but really, we don't care. Good? And again, I think you've done this before. Polynomial inequalities. Uh, you probably don't remember them by that name, but as we get into it, it'll start coming back to you. And we'll talk a little bit about the Boolean logic to solve the problems. So let's start with that. We've got a quadratic. We want to know for that quadratic, where does it satisfy that condition? Okay, so the first thing I would do is make an equation, solve that equation. That gives you critical numbers. You've heard the term critical numbers before, right? Beautiful. Good. And then these are the problems where you have to test regions. So you put them on a number line and you test regions. Is this coming back to you? Last year when you did these, what method did they show you to test regions? Plug and chug. Yeah. So uh, in a last year they would have said, okay, take uh, what's a good number to test in here? Yeah. Zero. So take zero and plug it into here, and see if it works. No. Where would where would you plug it in here? Yeah. Oh, no, the plug it into the original. Okay. What's a good number to use over here? Negative ten. Negative ten. Plug it in. See if it works. Okay. So, and that's the only method you learned last year? Okay, I'm going to show you uh, at least one other method which requires your calculator. So get out your calculators, please. Okay, so this is something called Boolean logic. And the way Boolean logic works is that it checks your, your equation. If it's true, it spits out a 1. If it's false, it spits out a 0. And the question you have to ask yourself, is it worth the time for me to use the calculator to do this, or can I just plug and chug? In the first example, I don't know why you would use this when you can all take 0 and put it into a simple inequality and solve it. But as the problem gets more complicated, I want to show you another method. Okay, so the process is fairly simple. I need to take, uh, we'll test zero first. I need to take zero and store it for x. Okay. Now, from that point on, whenever your calculator sees an x, it's going to consider it to be zero. And it's going to continue to do that forever until you put something else into x. All right, I don't know what it, what it is when you take it out of the box, nor do I care. Now, you just type in the inequality as we had it before. So, x squared, what was the original one? x squared minus 10? Yeah. x squared minus 10 is greater than, so the greater than is the test menu, which is above the math menu. Actually, second, math, three. And what was it greater than? 3x? 3x. Enter. And it spits out 0. Remember, 0 is false, 1 is true. Question D. How do you get the greater than last time? It's test. So it's second math. Okay. So again, initially typing the function in can be a pain in the butt, but you never have to type the function in again. If I want to test negative 10, I just go 
uh, the opposite of 10, store x, enter, and then go back up to that function you already typed in, hit enter, hit enter again, oh, that's true. And then we had, uh, is it five? Yeah, so let's test 10. 10, store x, enter, go back up to the inequality, hit enter, also true. Just another technique, and a lot of times we'll get into these kind of examples where I'll just give you more tools in your arsenal to use. You don't necessarily have to use this, but when the, comp when the problems get more complicated, you might want to switch and let the technology do all the work. Are we good? Has anybody seen this before? No. Okay. Are we good? All right, let's try it with another example then. Back to the slide, Joe. <laughs> I guess I left that out. You know, once you get this, you want the true regions, and you would use interval notation to express that. Negative infinity. Oh, wait a second. Um, would I include negative two in this problem? Correct. Yeah. Whether or not you include negative two comes from here. So it would be negative two parentheses, negative infinity to negative two, close parentheses, union parentheses 5 to infinity, close parentheses. Okay, let's ramp it up a little bit. Let's try that. Now we have a couple rational functions. Before I start anything, before I start any calculations or any way to solve that, what can you tell me about that inequality? More specifically, what can you tell me about x? We heard enough out of you today. Kevin? It can be 5 or negative 3 halves. Why? Because the denominator is 0. Correct. That's a very common mistake that people forget. Since we're dealing with rational functions, remember one of the rules of real numbers, you can't have a uh, zero denominator. Okay, staying with the same steps we used last time. Two over two x plus three is equal to two over x minus five. How do I solve that? Hmm? Cross multiply. 2x minus 10 is equal to 4x plus 6. So, I do my math right. Okay. Number line. When you put stuff on the number line, put it on the number line in the correct order. Negative 8. Negative 3 halves and 5. When everything is said and done, are we going to include negative 8? Yes, because this is a less than or equal to. So I'm going to put a big honking dot there. Am I going to include negative 3 halves? No. no, because it can never be negative 3 halves, regardless of what this says. With that same thought process, we have 5 not being included. Okay, so now here's an example. Do you want to use Boolean logic or do you want to just plug and chug? It's entirely up to you. But take two seconds and solve for those one, two, three, four regions and tell me are they true or false?
understand something. Speed is not important. So you have uh, true, false, true, false? False, true. Kevin is suggesting it goes false, true, false, true. What do the rest of you kids have? Is he right? I didn't test it. I don't know. Everybody else got the same thing? Yeah? All right. We'll trust it. I don't know if I trust Kanupke yet. We'll trust you, but not Kanupke. Okay, so I want the true regions. What is this in interval notation? Sam, what is this in interval notation? Uh, no, not you, Sam. This Sam. Sam M. Not Sam R. Sam R. Sam or Sam M. Sam M. Um, negative 8 to negative 3 halves, and so a bracket, and then a parenthesis. And then 5 to infinity. Oh, wait, you said bracket, and then parenthesis. Uh huh. How do you do? Bueno. Bueno. Good. This is a bracket. This is my fault, not his. Okay, well done. How many of you uh, tested this using the old fashioned plug and chug? Raise your hand. How many of you used the Boolean logic? <coughs> okay, beautiful. And again, I don't care what you do. You're never going to be, I shouldn't say never, but uh, very seldomly are you going to be asked to explain and or use one specific technique, unless, of course, it ends up on the non-calculator portion, which it probably would not. Okay, we're done. So that pretty much wraps up the uh, chapter P stuff. We got a little bit more to tweak, but for the most part, we're done there. Quiz tomorrow. Since it's our first quiz, I'm going to give you the full period to work on it. You, most of you will not need the full period, but that's okay.